is going on guys, Ed Bandicoot 101 here and welcome to my video where I describe myself delving into 4K. So as you guys can see I've recently picked up a 4K TV. At the moment I'm playing the what's it called Moving Art series on Netflix which does play in 4K. I've got the HDR mode enabled and it looks pretty fantastic. So this is 4K, 60 frames a second and I'm going to tell you which TV it is. So this is only 40 inches, it's the 6100 series Samsung 40 inch TV. So this was released in 2015 and supports things like 4K at 60Hz, which is, for the latent view out there, it is 3840 by 2160 in terms of the overall resolution, and 60Hz means 60, pixels per uh, 60 frames per second in terms of the refresh rate of the monitor. Uh, I needed to pick up something that was 60Hz because I do a lot of gaming, so I've also recently purchased the Xbox One S, uh, which obviously upscales to 4K at 60Hz, although it doesn't play it natively, but it does mean I can chuck 4K at 60Hz off of my GTX 1080 gaming rig behind me, to have absolutely amazing 4K experiences in terms of gaming. But the HDR is an added bonus as well because the future PlayStation Plus and the Xbox One S and the upcoming Xbox One Scorpio will support HDR content on some games. Like I know Forza 3 Horizon supports HDR uh, as well as 4K, so stuff like that's going to look fantastic. And it's absolutely beautiful. So HDR means high dynamic range and means more accurate and realistic lighting in scenes, which as you can see, this does look absolutely fantastic. And this video is only in 1080p at 60 frames a second, so you're not going to get a true idea of how dense the pixels are in this, because it really is ultra sharp. I've left the picture in terms of how it looks stock as to what the natural settings on the TV are, and um, I've reduced things like the motion, I've, I've turned off the motion, anti-motion blur stuff, so most of the post-processing I've taken out of the equation just to try and get the picture to look as real and vivid as possible with standard picture settings, HDR enabled, and I've got to say, while Samsung displays are slightly saturated for the purists out there, I think the vibrancy of the display is absolutely lovely and I could not fault it. Uh, I'd highly recommend picking one up. I picked this one up for £499, which is about $700, US and over here, including our value added tax that we pay in England, that is damn cheap for a 4K curved HDR 40 inch panel. Obviously it's LED, it's not AMOLED, it's nothing special, but it was a hell of an upgrade from the 32-inch Blaupunk HD TV that I had previously. But uh, I've got to say, Battlefield 1 on the Xbox One S, upscaled uh, from 1080p to 4K uh, with HDR enabled, looks absolutely beautiful. Uh, I cannot fault the TV. For the price point, I think it's fantastic. It's light. And another thing I thought I'd have to mention is the fact that it does have HDMI 2.0 support, meaning stuff like the Xbox One S and my PC can be inputted at 4K 60Hz. No compromises in terms of the refresh rate for pushing that resolution, as long as you have a fast enough HDMI cable to do so, uh, aka HDMI 2.0a cable. My graphics card is a 1080 as previously mentioned, which means it supports HDMI 2.0b. Not sure what the difference is there, but uh, anyway, it's definitely 4K at 60 hertz, which is brilliant. Another thing I thought I'd have to mention is the fact that the speakers in this TV are fantastic. So if you are looking at picking it up, try it before you buy a soundbar combo with it, because while you may get a soundbar slightly cheaper if you purchase it with the TV. I would hold off because from a consumer perspective, the sound output from this TV is absolutely spectacular. So spectacular, in fact, I've actually unplugged my uh, House of Mali dual speaker system I have behind it, which is, I think it's 200 watts, so it's quite a big speaker system. I've actually unplugged that and removed it from my setup because it didn't really fit behind the TV, but also because the speakers inbuilt in the TV are incredibly crisp, there's a fair bit of bass considering how small the drivers are, and uh, the highs are great and the mids are fantastic and I couldn't fault the speakers to be honest, there's no, there's no real compromises, obviously the bass isn't that rumbly because of the size of the speakers, but for a standard listening experience I could not fault the speakers on the system, not to mention the fact that the TV only weighs 8 kilos. So I hope you've enjoyed my delve into 4K, I'm certainly enjoying it very much and I'd highly recommend this TV actually for those of you wanting to get into entry level 4K because it, from a technical perspective, 4K, 60Hz and HDR and a curved display at this price point, which looks awesome if you're sat in the right position. Um, it's fantastic if you're a single user. But do know, if you are using this for a family, having a curved display means there is an op optimal place to sit. And if there's multiple people watching the TV, it's not really that good. It's not going to really encompass a room. It is for a single viewer. And as it is my personal TV, it is perfect for me. I really enjoy it. And I hope you guys, if you're looking to delve into 4K, consider this panel because I couldn't fault it. It's bottom lit, meaning it's not back lit. Uh, so, and purists out there may say, you know, get a bit of backlight bleed. I couldn't say I spot any backlight bleed. I've seen bad TN monitors before with backlight bleed. This does not exhibit any of those um, issues. And the backlighting, as you can see, is incredibly even. It's not particularly brighter at the bottom, if at all. I can't, couldn't say I think it is at all. So, um, absolutely fantastic. If you're looking at getting into 4K, pick one up. I'll see you guys very soon with more awesome gaming and tech content. 
Stay subscribed for more awesome videos as well because other stuff I've re recently posted is uh, getting pretty good views. So have a look at those. But also check out my social media. Links to that are in the description below. Uh, Facebook at Bandicoot101, Twitter is at Bandicoot101, and Instagram is at Bandicoot101. Links to all that stuff is in the description. So feel free to follow me, tweet at me, and all that good stuff to keep me producing this awesome content for you guys. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you very soon with more awesome content.